Lucy was amongst the few individuals in the world that secures a good job immediately after graduating from university. She was only 22 when she landed a job as a software engineer in a reputable company. The salary was hefty, and everything seemed to be clicking in place. What made the job even more special to her was that being the first-born child in a family of six, Lucy could now comfortably cater for her siblings' school fees, as well as help her parents financially. Not that her family was that poor, but again, they weren't that rich. Everything they had, had to come through a financial struggle. Her dad was working as a chef in a local restaurant, while her mom had a small salon in town. Her two brothers, who were all closely behind her in age, were in the university, while her twin younger sisters were in high school. Since she was little, Lucy had always been the selfless type. She had the sweetest and most loving soul. She was soft-spoken, always wore a smile on her face, and she was the most welcoming person ever. She had a soft spot for helping, and so she always placed other people's problems before hers. Not because she didn't love herself enough, but because it was in her to do so, and so she couldn't help herself. So when she landed the job, she was more excited that she could now comfortably help her family more than she was even happy for herself. Her salary was enough to cater for all her needs, as well as cater for those of her family members. Lucy swore to herself that she wouldn't get married or engage in any of the pleasures of the world until her siblings had become financially stable. According to her calculations, she thought to herself that if her two brothers graduated from uni and she helped them secure good jobs, then they would in turn help her sisters, and just like that, her whole family would become financially stable. It was all about her being the firstborn, setting a path that the rest of her siblings would follow in. Five years into her job, Lucy had received promotion after promotion, and so her salary was almost thrice the starting salary. Money was no longer a problem to her, and so this meant she tasked herself with even more responsibilities for the sake of her family. By now, her dad and mom had quit working, and so they were fully depending on their daughter for survival. Her two brothers had graduated from uni, she helped them secure jobs, and they were now earning good salaries. As of her twin sisters, they were now in their final year in the university. However, at this juncture, Lucy's family dependency on her had reached toxic levels, and they had even become entitled to her help. They even felt it was squarely her responsibility to cater for their needs. Despite being employed, Lucy's two brothers still relied on her to bail them out of their financial situations. The two had become too dependent on her such that, whenever they got paid, they would waste their salaries with women and alcohol, then ask Lucy to help them out financially. Every day, her dad would show up in random clubs in town with his friends, drink the beers they could, then call her daughter to foot the bill. Her mom was always getting herself into bad debts knowingly, simply because her daughter would later clear them all for her. Her twin sisters were always calling her asking for money so they could buy the latest fashion trends. In a nutshell, to sum up the whole family, Lucy's money had become theirs, and so they would randomly call her demanding for it. Lucy, being the sweet soul she was, she always came through for them financially. As the first-born kid, she had come to believe that her family was her responsibility, and so she did everything she could for them with a pure heart and immeasurable love. The more her family drained her with bills, the more Lucy worked even harder so she could stay afloat financially. She had even started taking freelancing jobs whenever possible, so she could supplement her salary. In her five years in employment, Lucy had not been lucky enough to invest in her personal projects, because her family's responsibilities couldn't let her. What was even sadder, is that no one in her family ever appreciated her for her efforts towards them. It's like they were all out to exploit her to the core. 
Every now and then, her dad would arrange for family meetings, then invite all his friends and neighbors, and poor Lucy would be forced to cater for all the food and drinks in the house. Whenever Lucy tried to show the littlest sign of protest towards her family members, her parents would zip her up, by bringing up the narrative of how they had struggled to raise her, fed her, and took her to school, and so it behooved her to show a little gratitude by sharing what she had with them. Five more years passed, and all of Lucy's siblings had gotten married. Each had kids, who were now almost joining school. Thinking that now she would finally take her rest, Lucy was in for a rude shock when her siblings started complaining to her that they didn't have money to fund their kids' school fees. And once again, without complaining, Lucy took up the responsibility of educating her siblings' kids. After all, am I not their auntie? Lucy asked herself. By now, age was catching up with her, but she was so tied down with endless responsibilities that she couldn't notice the change. Her goodness and sweet soul had become her life prison. So one day, Lucy decided to quit her job and start her own company. She had wrestled with this thought for long, and finally, she decided it was the best course of action because she could later employ her siblings, thus eliminating their prolonged dependency on her. Lucy had figured it out that, by them working for her, they could be indirectly repaying her favors. The news about Lucy starting her own company wasn't received well by her family. They complained that her quitting her job wasn't a wise decision and that she should have consulted them first. In them, they felt that it would take time before the company started turning in profits, and so that meant Lucy wouldn't be able to take care of their needs. Lucy sat through the whole conversation as her parents and siblings watered down her business idea, but for the first time in her life, she stood on her ground, and no one could change her stand. Finally, they all decided to let her follow her dream. However, they promised her that they would watch her company from afar until it started turning in profits. Relieved by their decisions, Lucy went ahead and started her company. She had high hopes of becoming successful in the business, but life had other plans in store for her. The company being a sole proprietorship, Lucy had to use her money and some bank loans to keep it running. For the first six months, everything seemed to be clicking on well, until the day she decided to employ her siblings. Thinking that they would help her run the business smoothly since they were family, Lucy was in for a rude shock when her siblings, and their combined efforts, brought the whole company to its knees. They looted almost all the company's resources, mismanaged the funds, and drove all the customers away. Within a few months, Lucy watched painfully as her dream went up in flames. She was forced to close down the company, and she was now left with loads of hefty bank loans to pay. Taking up any freelancing job that came her way, Lucy set herself up on a mission to clear the bank loans. At times, she could feel depression kicking in, but being the strong woman she was, she refused to yield to it. By now, all her siblings had gone on to secure good jobs, but none of them dared to come to her aid. Her nephews and nieces, who she had earlier been told that they lacked school fees, never missed a single day in school. Her parents didn't want anything to do with her anymore, and they were even in the forefront of inciting their other kids against Lucy. Lucy watched painfully as the people she had so much given her everything to make their lives better, moved on with their life without a care in the world. Somehow, her siblings had become financially independent, and they didn't need her anymore. Lucy felt like the gifts wrapping that end up getting thrown in the trash bin after the owners had taken the valuables that had been wrapped in them. She sold her everything, including her house, clothes, and car, as she tried to raise money to clear the bank loans. She literally tried to beg her parents and siblings to take her in, but none could hear her pleas. Finally, after months of distress and living in low-end hotel rooms, Lucy's former classmate, Jane, happened to hear about Lucy's misfortunes, and she took Lucy in. 
Lucy and Jane were not even close friends back in school, but Jane took her in and treated her better than her family. To Lucy, Jane felt more of a sister than her twin sisters had been to her. Jane even bought new clothes and shoes for Lucy, and she gave her her car so she could be using it to commute. As a show of gratitude for her hospitality, Lucy would make sure that she took good care of Jane's children whenever Jane was away at work. Jane's job as an accountant wasn't that well-paying, but she couldn't quit because she was a single mom, and she badly needed the money. So, after two years of living harmoniously and happily with Jane, Lucy was able to clear all her bank loans on time, and by God's grace, she started a new company. Her new company picked from the very first day of operation. Within a few months, Lucy became the newest millionaire in town. As a reward, Lucy made Jane her co-manager, built her a nice home, and she took her kids to a nice school. By now, Jane and Lucy's friendship had grown so deep, till people on the streets always confused them for sisters. When Lucy's parents and siblings heard about her new company, they came looking for her, but this time round, they were met by a Lucy who didn't understand the concept of family by blood. Lucy had already found a new family, and so she didn't need them at all. They tried to beg her to forgive them, but Lucy was not the Lucy they once knew anymore.